So in today's class, we will talk about the laws of thermodynamics. So already what is thermodynamics, you might have understood, right? In thermodynamics is a branch of science in which we are trying to study the science behind large number of particles, right? So it's like a system of gas where you are not talking about one or two or atom, you are talking about how got a number of atoms and trying to get the physics out of this system, right? The thing is that we have to see what are the different laws governing that system. And there are basically many laws which comes in, but the thing is that all these laws are ex purely obtained by experimental observation, as I was studying in the last class, right? So we'll go one by one, what are the laws of thermodynamics? So before that, what is the thermodynamic process? So a thermodynamic process is one in which heat is added or take a, taken away from a system, right? So if you've got a system, you're either adding some heat or taking away some heat, and there might be some changes which are happening within the system, and that is known as a thermodynamic process. During this process, what are, are the physics governing that system? That is what we are looking at, right? So the first law is known as the zero law of thermodynamics, and this law came after the first two laws law came, and the, therefore the number was given back index number zero, right? Now the zero law, in or another, if, we, if you look at the zero law, it seems that very simple, right? If two systems are in equilibrium, you might have seen A, B, and C. If A and C are in equilibrium, and if B and C are in equilibrium. Right? It means that A and B, uh, A and C are in equilibrium, right? So, so what it says is that if two systems are in thermal, uh, so the uh, the whole essence of this one is that two systems are at thermal equilibrium if they have the same temperature, right? So the advantage of this one is that you can design thermometers, so you can make your thermometer same as that of the thermometer in the US, right? It is based on this principle of the zero law, right? So you can think about that one. And today's class, we will be mainly looking at what is first law of thermodynamics, right? So first law of thermodynamics states that it's basically related to conservation of energy. So you have got different forms of energy and you're equating one energy to another, so, right? So this is for the first time you might be coming across such thing. For example, it says that if you have got a system of gas, suppose you have got a system of gas, this is a chamber of gas, and there's a piston which is provided, which is the movable piston, which you can move up, up or down, right? So if the gases are exer exerting pressure, the piston will move up. If you want to compress the gas, you can just apply some work and it will come down, right? So, you, so also you can provide some heat. So assume that this is like a movable piston and below this chamber, you have got a heat to be supplied, right? Thermal heat you can supply and that heat is your Q, right? So Q is being provided from here. So Q, uh, Q can be given to the system or taken from the system. So there's a sign convention, right? Like just like po electron and positron. Electron is given negative charge and positron is given positive charge. Heat can be given to the system, you take it as some positive value. Heat is uh, taken from the system, it might be negative. So which is positive and negative will come to that one later. So heat can be given to the system or taken from the system. And this is a system of gas. And system of the gas has some internal energy, right? and the gases are moving. So suppose you heat the system, it will have larger internal energy, right? So, but also you can do some work on the system, right? Now the question is that, if you want to increase the internal energy of the system, what you are supposed to do? You, you can either give some heat, or you have to do some work, right? So if you do some work, so if you do some work, so if you move the piston down, you are doing some work, and that W will be taken as positive. And if you are providing some heat, you will take that Q as positive. And it means that your delta U is going to increase. Is that fine? So with that sign convention, we come to this picture of the law of conservation of energy, which says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be redistributed, right? So the internal, change in internal energy for the system can happen in two ways. In which ways? Either you provide heat to the system or you do work on the system. Clear? Upon if Q, so it means that Q will be positive if, if you are supplying heat, W will be positive if you are doing some work on the system, and delta U will indirectly become positive. Right? In other way, you can think about that if you delta U, suppose the system decides that it is going to decrease the internal energy. How it can decrease the internal energy? It has to do some work. Just like you, if you are very excited, if you are good, uh, like food is your Q, you are taking the food, your very internal energy is very high. 
Now, if you do a lot of work, what will happen? Your energy will come down, right? So, you, the, so in that example, you are the system and your internal energy is how active you are and Q is your supply of food, like heat. And if you have the food, you have got a lot of energy. If you do some work, you are exhausted. So, your energy will come down, right? Now, that is not directly related to that example because if you have a lot of food also, you will get excited, you will get de-excited. So, that is different. Is that fine? So, that is the relationship between. So, here, even though the law stays very simple, there are different sign conventions which are coming in. So, the same equation in different books could be plus somewhere, minus somewhere. So, even this U can take positive and negative. W can take positive and negative and U can take positive and negative. So, this you might have understood, right? Now, this formula takes a, a, a very modified form when you are talking about quasi-static process. What do you mean by quasi-static process? Quasi-static process means you are moving from one state to another state and these two states are so close enough, right? So, it's almost like an equilibrium, right? That is a quasi-static state. So, but, uh, right? So, if you are moving from A to B, if somebody asks what is A and B, it's totally different, it's not a quasi-static. So, quasi-static, usually the example which you see in most of the books are quasi-static process is that if you want to apply some work done, if you have to move this piston down, you do some force, right? So, actually the concept is that you put some weight on this piston. If you put some weight on this piston, the force acting will be Wg, right? And it will come down, right? Now, if you put this weight all of a sudden, it is not a quasi-static process. And don't uh, if you just put this weight, the piston just comes down and then it will do some equilibrium, uh, it will some non-equilibrium state and finally it will come to equilibrium, right? But the thing is that you can arrive at the same position, so, but, uh, so suddenly you put this weight, the piston arrive at this position after some wobbling, right? It will not come exactly there, right? Now the same state can be arrived by a quasi-static process, the way is that you will be putting that weight not all of a sudden, you will be put in a slow manner, just like the example they say is that put in like a grain of sand. So, if it is like 10 kg, you are not putting the 10 kg all of a sudden, uh, grains of sand will, padke padke will drop. You will keep dropping that sand, right, so that uh, that 10 is arrived. So, during that process, what will happen? It, you will see that the, how the piston is moving. The piston will slowly move from the initial position to the final position, right, without any wobbling. So, it is always, you feel that any snapshot you take, it is le just like the system is always in equilibrium. Right? Is that fine? So, now that is a quasi static process. So, if you take a quasi static process, the, uh, the two instances were so close enough, I can replace these deltas as D, uh, like you have derivatives. Right? Just like mathematics, you say delta, U, delta x in the limit, t uh, is very small, delta x is dx. Right? If that is the case, so, what you say is that delta U should be delta Q plus delta W, right? For a quasi-static process, you might write du equal to dQ plus dW, right? But if you write this one, this is not exactly true. This is not exactly true because in mathematics, when you say differentiation, right, it means that it's a perfect differential, right? Now, the thing is that these two things are not perfect differential. So, you put a cross over here. So, in a quasi-static process, your first law of thermodynamics will take the form delta u, du equal to d cross q plus d bar d cross w, which means that it is not a perfect differential. Now, what is a perfect differential? What is a perfect differential? Mathematically, perfect differential means that if you are differentiating that equation from point 1 to 2, right, it, does, it depends only on the initial and the final position. That is perfect differential. Like someone asks you, what is the potential potential difference between the ground and the top, uh, from between the first floor and the third floor? What do you do? It is mg delta h, right? So if you are, you move from this first floor to third floor by walking or taking a lift, or someone took you in a lap, the change in potential energy will be what? It's always del mg delta h. So the potential energy is a perfect differential because it does not depend on the path you are taken, right? But work done depends on the path, right? So, internal energy is a perfect differential, just like your pressure and temperature, but work done is not a perfect differential. Is that fine? So, work done is not a perfect differential. In that same example of the lift, you can assume that I am walking all the way to the third floor and I am doing a lot of work and another person took a lift. 
So he is not, do, not, not doing that much of work. Some electrical power has been doing some work, right? Clear? So the thing is that uh, delta u is a perfect differential. So if you want, uh, so this delta u entirely depends on the temperature of the system. So in reality, when you move to uh, some uh, gas equation, you know that already you know, know the reason that the internal energy of a gas in a three dimension is 3 by 2. RT, that is what we saw in the last class, right? So one dimension it will be half, uh, half KBT, two dimension it will be 2 by 2 KBT and three dimension it will be 3 by 2 KBT. So U purely depends on T, right? If you, if you know the initial system, final system, the temperature is fixed. Delta U will depend only on the initial and final point. That's not depend how it reached, right? So suppose you want to increase delta U by 10 joules, right? Either you can supply 10 joules of heat directly without do, not doing any work or you do some work not, don't supply any delta Q or you can supply 5 5 so there are different ways you can arrive at 10 right and that means that this is not perfect differential right so this is the thing which you should take in your head because usually the people remember that first law of thermodynamics is delta Q equal to uh, delta U equal to delta Q plus delta W otherwise the story theory nila. the story just continues saying that about the perfect differential altitude right it should be differentiable all not differentiable is that fine? Right. Right. So what we take is the work done on this, uh, work done on other systems. So if, so if this system, if the system is doing some work, the work will be taken as negative. Right. So if the gas decides that it is going to expand, so you go to the auditorium and uh, have a blush. You are doing going to do some work and you will be exhausted. We are totally taking both You are exhausted. Right. Similarly, input work on the system is taken as positive. You do some work. Right, then it is, uh, you do, means I do some work on the system, I am doing some work positive on the system. Is that fine? Right, so these are the basic sign convention. Delta U equal to U, uh, Q plus W. So that's why in most of the undergraduate books, definitely they are, uh, they are uh, not writing in terms of D. They are just writing delta U equal to Q plus W. They will write delta Q plus delta W. So they don't uh, say about this one. Some people might be saying, but you might skip that part because you feel that it is not, but that is the main part of the whole story, right? So this is the first law in basic nutshell. So you have got the internal, uh, so you have got a system having the pressure, volume, temperature. So you have got a specific volume, pressure, volume, temperature. So PV equal to NRT. If you know PV, temperature is fixed. If you know temperature, U is also fixed. So it's like a system with all the internal, uh, all the static variables. So this is known as a state variables. So, which are the ex uh, example of a state variables will be pressure, volume, temperature, internal energy, so and so forth. If someone asks you, is work an work a state variable? Work is not a state variable because it depends on the path. So, you are not going to take that. Right? So, you are changing this system to first uh, uh, state 1 to state 2 using some thermodynamic process. So, during this thermodynamic process, what we are actually facing is that there is an energy conservation law. Is that fine? Right. So, I just wanted to do one problem straight away and you just see the answer that it comes out. So it's a thermodynamic process, the, a system absorbs 450 kilojoules, a system is absorbing 450 kilojoules of heat and it is doing 87 kilojoules of work on surrounding. So the system is doing some work on the surrounding and the system has already taken 450 kilojoules of energy. Now you have to see how much is the change in internal energy, right? So first you should remember what was the formula, you write that formula, so already the formula is given to you and you have to substitute properly with the sign convention, right? So what will be the answer? Just let me know. So heat is Q and work done is given there directly. Just addition, subtraction, without calculator, one minute. So you are going for, going for this competitive exam, the thing is that you know the formula, you know what to substitute, but you are not able to do it fast. So that is a problem with the practice. You cannot go to a football ground all of a sudden and go a score. You have to practice daily. Daily six months practice, you might be able to at least go to the nearby post. That's all. So you have to practice. So what is the answer? So it is what? That many mangoes or bananas, it should be what? You should always say the unit, 360 kilojoules. 
How many people got 360 kilojoules? 360. So 360 also you write, you don't get the full mark. Whether it is joules, kilojoules, you have to write the unit. So how many people got 360 kilojoules? Raise your hands. How many people got? 360. Ah, 363 it will come. It is mistake is there. So how many people got 363? Fine. Right. Is that fine? So now we have a small discussion on what is second law of thermodynamics. So first law dealt with conservation of energy and second law is very important because that is for the first time we are talking about the direction of time. So given two snapshots, which I always say, given two snapshots, you, should, you can say which one happened first and which one happened later. The, the, by intuition you are saying, but actually the intuition is working on the principle of entropy. Right? So if you take a, uh, a ink and you put, a drop on, uh, you put that drop on a fish tank, you take the snapshot before dropping, you see a dense blue color sitting there. After 10 minutes you take it, it will be uniform blue color, light bluish color. Now you take these two snapshots and if you ask your parent which one happened first, without any hesitation you will say this one happened first, right? Now the thing is that in physics point of view we need to say what is the proof and that this is for the first time we are to talking about the proof, it is entropy, right? So entropy is the measure of disorderness, disorder you have this for the system and thing is that for all irreversible process the system will always try to increase the entropy. Right, for reversible process is not the case, it can go back also. So it, if you go from A to B, in chemistry you are writing a reaction A forward arrow and backward arrow, it means that the entropy for the system A and B is the same. So A can go to B and B can go to C. If you feel both your, uh, uh, both, uh, both college and home the same, you might be either in the college or you might be in the house. But if your entropy, if your randomness is too much in the college, you don't prefer to stay in this home. You want to do, come home, come to college and do some activity, make some disorder, you are very active. So you always prefer to be here, right? So thing is that uh, S is the entropy of system, S always try to increase. So given a system, we will later see that we will study Boltzmann hypothesis, how do you calculate S? So you can calculate S for first case and second case, whichever delta S is greater, that happened later, right? So that is the second law. The entropy for a closed system never decreases as time goes by. It always want to increase. So delta S is always greater than zero. Is that fine? So I think with, with this we stop the three laws and we will continue in the next class.